different types of DB2 locks and locking levels. Have you ever wondered how DB2 ensures data consistency in a multi-user environment? The answer lies in DB2 locks. Imagine a bustling marketplace where everyone wants to buy the same item. Without a system, it can quickly turn into chaos. That's where DB2 locks come in. They act as a sophisticated system that controls who gets to access or modify the data and when. Like a marketplace manager, DB2 locks ensure everyone gets their turn, maintaining harmony and preventing conflicts. There are several types of locks in DB2, each with a unique role to play. Some are like the security guards, ensuring exclusive access, while others are like ticket distributors, indicating the intention to access. From the broad table space lock to the precise row level lock, each lock plays a critical part in this intricate system. Intrigued? Let's dive deeper into the different types of locks in DB2. First, we have shared locks or SHR. These locks play a crucial role in ensuring smooth data access in read-only operations. Imagine a bustling library filled with eager readers, each wanting to enjoy the same bestseller. Shared locks function much like these books, allowing multiple transactions to read the same data simultaneously. They're the team players of the lock world, ensuring everyone gets a fair chance to read the data. But what happens when someone wants to make changes, like writing annotations on the book's pages? Well, shared locks have got that covered too. They prevent any transaction from acquiring an exclusive lock, thereby blocking any modification to the data. This ensures that while everyone can read the data, no one can change it until the shared locks are released. So SHR locks are all about sharing data for reading. Next, we have update and exclusive locks. Let's take a closer look at these two types of locks and their roles in the IBM DB2 environment. First up, we have the update lock. Picture this as a lock that's acquired when a transaction has its site set on an update mission for a specific row of data. This lock is like a gatekeeper, preventing other transactions from securing an exclusive lock on the same data. However, it doesn't stop other transactions from acquiring shared locks. So in essence, while an update lock is in place, multiple transactions can read the data, but only one can update it at a time. It's a system that ensures order and prevents chaos. Now let's move on to the exclusive lock. Just as the name suggests, this lock is all about exclusivity. When a transaction holds an exclusive lock on data, it's a bit like having VIP access at a concert. No other transactions can acquire any type of lock, be it shared, update, or another exclusive on the same data. This lock is used when a transaction needs to update or modify data, and it doesn't want any interference from other transactions. It's the ultimate do not disturb sign in the world of DB2 locks. So in summary, update locks and exclusive locks play crucial roles in controlling data access and maintaining data consistency. The update lock allows multiple transactions to read data, but ensures that only one transaction can update it at a time. On the other hand, the exclusive lock provides a transaction with sole access to data preventing all other transactions from acquiring any type of lock on the same data. These two locks help to maintain the balance in a multi-user DB2 environment, ensuring that data updates and modifications are carried out systematically and without conflict. So the next time you need to make updates or modifications to your data, remember, update and exclusive locks are your go-to when you need to update or modify data. Scene script. Let's turn our attention to intent locks now. Intent locks play an important role in the DB2 environment. They are designed to indicate a transaction's intention to acquire locks at a higher or lower level. So in essence, they're all about signaling future actions. Think of them as a heads up or a warning signal to other transactions in the system. Now, there are two types of intent locks, each with a specific purpose. First, we have the intent share lock, also known as IS. This lock signals the intention to acquire shared locks on a set of related data. It could be a table, a page, or even a row. The purpose here is to allow multiple transactions to read the same data simultaneously, but it blocks any attempt to acquire an exclusive lock on the same data. Then, we have the intent exclusive lock, or nine. This lock clearly signals the intention to acquire an exclusive lock on a set of related data. It's like saying, hey, I'm planning to modify this data so no other transaction can have an exclusive lock on it. The beauty of intent locks is that they help reduce contention in a multi-user environment. 
By signaling the intention to acquire shared or exclusive locks, transactions can efficiently determine if their action is likely to conflict with other transactions. This preemptive approach allows transactions to avoid unnecessary wait times and maintain a smooth flow of operations. Just imagine a busy intersection with no traffic lights or signs. Chaos, right? Now place a traffic light there, signaling the drivers when to stop, go or slow down, and suddenly everything runs smoothly. That's precisely what intent locks do in the DB2 environment. They act as traffic lights guiding transactions and preventing potential conflicts. Remember, the role of locks in DB2 is to control data access and ensure data consistency. Intent locks with their signaling mechanism play a crucial part in this process, helping to maintain harmony and efficiency in the system. Intent locks are all about signaling future actions. Now let's talk about table space, row level, page level, and table level locks. Diving right into it, we have the table space lock. It's like the bouncer at the entrance of a club, controlling access to the entire venue, or in this case, the table space. When a transaction holds a table space lock, it prevents other transactions from acquiring locks on any table within that table space. This is a broad sweep kind of lock, often used for maintenance operations. Now let's scale down a bit to the row level lock. This lock is like a personal security guard for a single row within a table. It's a fine grained lock, providing a high level of concurrency. Different transactions can read and modify different rows concurrently. This makes row-level locks efficient when transactions only need to access or modify a small subset of rows within a table. It's like each row has its own little bubble of protection. Next up, we have the page-level lock. Think of this as a security guard for an entire floor in a building. These locks are used to lock entire data pages. They're more granular than table space locks but less granular than row-level locks. A transaction holding can access all rows on the locked page, but it, doesn't, but it doesn't block other transactions from accessing other pages within the table. It's a mid-level lock, offering a balance between granularity and breadth. And last but not least, we have the table-level lock. This is like a lock on the main door of a building. When a transaction holds a table-level lock, it prevents other transactions from acquiring any type of lock on the same table. This is a less granular lock and is typically not recommended for high concurrency environments. It's like saying, this whole table, it's mine and no one else can touch it. So there you have it. From the broad sweep of the table space lock to the individual bubble of the row level lock, down to the floor by floor control of the page level lock and the all or nothing approach of the table level lock. These locks offer varying levels of granularity to suit different needs. They each have their place in the realm of DB2, providing control and preventing conflicts in a multi-user environment. Remember, the right lock for the job depends on your specific needs. Sometimes you need the broad control of a table space lock, other times you only need to lock a single row with a row level lock. The key is understanding each lock's purpose and using it to your advantage. These locks offer varying levels of granularity to suit different needs. Now that we've explored the different types of locks in DB2, let's recap. Shared locks are like polite conversations, allowing multiple transactions to read the same data simultaneously. Update locks, on the other hand, give one transaction the chance to update data while others can only read. Exclusive locks are the solo artists, granting exclusive access to the data resource. Intent locks are like sending out RSVPs, signaling a transaction's intention to acquire locks at different levels. Table space locks, somewhat like bouncers, restrict access to entire table spaces. Row level locks are the diplomats, letting transactions lock individual rows for high concurrency. Page level locks control access to entire data pages, providing a balance between granularity and concurrency. Lastly, table level locks lock down entire tables, offering a less granular option. Remember, Understanding these locks is key to maintaining data consistency in DB2.